Getting the 71 Jimmy EMP prepared really comes in two phases. The first phase is basically the vehicle itself is the right starting point. It has old school stuff, no computers. It basically was, was sort of designed by GM back in the 70s to be EMP proof when they didn't even think about it. The second part though, is just in case there's a really high voltage EMP blast, we wanna replace those things that are the most um, sort of susceptible. And that would be the distributor, the alternator, and I want a little set of instructions, a bag, and the tools in with those parts so that if something did happen and a really high voltage blast were to hit, in a matter of 15 minutes, everything is switched out and they're back on the road. Hey Chris. Hey bud. I, uh... I got some stuff, parts that Audrey said, you said were everything we needed, and I got instructions. Ignition module, just a voltage regulator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because alternator doesn't have anything that controls the voltage inside of it. Okay. All right, so I, I went through the instructions, and the only thing it says we have to have is this tube of silicone, so we're gonna yeah. have it. Yeah, um, that actually dissipates heat. Okay. All right, so what tools do I need? Because it didn't look like we needed any pliers or wrenches, right? No, no, no. Uh, the only thing you really need other than what we got here is this module's held on by two quarter inch, uh, you know, a machine. Okay, so a nut driver? Um, yeah. Matter of fact, that's quarter inch. All right, so if I've got a flat, do I need regular screwdrivers or will this work? I've got flat well, Phillips and nut drivers. This is fine for everything other than taking the cap off and you're gonna need a, this okay. to, to get the cap off. All right, so we need these yep, two. Those two. And these two, all right, so. And these two have to be in the Faraday mm, bag, right? Those do, these don't. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so if an EMP killed that, we'd all be dead anyway, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, if our screwdriver goes bad. So do me a favor. Okay. Um, I need a rag. I just I don't want this puncturing the bag itself. Okay. I, so I, if I got, got some like throwaways. Some tape. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got some throwaways. In a worst case scenario, is this? If you had nothing, if you were naked, could you take the truck that went down because of a high energy surge and put it back on the road with these tools, that silicone, these instructions, and yes. those two things? That's yes. everything. Yep. All right. Yep. Then, that's sure good. I could probably do it with a pocket knife. <laughs> well, okay. that, that's just me. Yeah, I'm just trying to stop this. You know, if, if this thing bangs around for a couple of years, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want it eating anything. So I, I kind of want a double Faraday. I want everything which is now insulated from the bag, but I want this Faraday bag inside another Faraday container. Yeah. So, so help me sort of, I, I need this thing tucked up real tight. Okay. All right, and let's throw one more wrap of tape around this. Because we have to insulate, you know, like everything's insulated from everything at this point, right? That's yeah. It's tight, but it'll go. All right. All right. We got tools, instructions, silicone. Ignition module. And voltage regulator. Voltage regulator. We've got metal shielding cloth, cloth protecting Faraday bag, Faraday bag insulated on top. I mean, I, you know, I don't see how we really could do any, do, do much more than that. So now I gotta go out this on the gym. Oh yeah, so how are we gonna test it? <laughs> I'm hoping we don't ever have to test it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let's stick it in the microwave. I'm ready for somebody else to work on that truck for a while. So I'm gonna seal this box up with metal tape. You already put the instructions and everything in Everything's there, right? in, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's ready to go. It's a little late to ask the question, but still. Yep. E. M. Well, don't give it away. You need to give it away. I, I want people, so. Uh, now they're going to steal it. Open in emergency? Emergency use only. Yeah. You should have wrote like tampons on it. People would have left it alone. Oh, you, you were, there's something wrong with you. It goes right here in that. Look at that. 
I think that's cool. It fits. This truck could flip over 58 times and that would still be there. I like it. It better, it put a lot of time into this truck. It's a nice truck though. The biggest challenge with EMP is that the entire vehicle, all of the metal structure can become an antenna and, and sort of focus all of the excess energy that's in the atmosphere and can focus it into the critical paths of the wires and all the, the most critical small circuits. Well, fortunately in 1971, there really weren't any electronics to speak of on vehicles. So the, the good news is, the vehicle was never designed to be EMP susceptible, so for the most part, it's not. Now, the new challenge is that there are some EMP uh, capable weapons out there that are much stronger than anything that had ever been thought of back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And so what we're doing is we're really going to the next level, which is um, taking anything that is even a little bit susceptible, like the alternator and the distributor, and we're basically putting spares in, old school, with uh, points and condenser, in a Faraday box, tools and instructions, and so sort of the combination of what GM did in the 70s even with what's going on today with the newest weapons, with, with our Faraday box, I think uh, the Jimmy's gonna be ready to go no matter what happens.